In this video, we're gonna talk about opening up a thrift store in 2023. Right now, it's March 2023, so got a little bit of a late start of this video, but it did give me a little bit of a time for, um, it's the end of March, so it gave me a few months here to see how this year was kind of starting, you know, as far as how people were buying and how it just kind of looks like it's gonna go, um, so I could give a few tips. I've been in the resale business for over a decade. Um, we've been in this location, this store where we're at now for, I'm thinking it's about four or five years. I'd have to look and see. It gets, it gets hard to keep up with everything because we moved to this building from somewhere else. We were just operating in just a warehouse, um, just a couple miles from here. We moved to this building several years ago and this is where we're at now, but I'm going to talk about opening up a thrift store here in 2023 because it changes over time and first off would i recommend opening up a thrift store in 2023 well yes and no if you're just starting out in the resale business like 100 percent fresh and new and you think that you're just going to jump right into opening up a store and that's the way to go then i would say no start off either find a booth like a booth space or you know consignment space at a store which we do that here what we do is i'll show you that here in just a minute we have blocks of space that we will rent the person pays rent for that space and then we take a percentage we take 10 percent of sales so then we worry about taxes we worry about insurance we pay the light bill all that kind of stuff because there's a lot of stuff that you know that you don't think about it's not as easy as just renting a building you got to rent the building obviously which that's a lot of money because usually you got to have a lot of money up front first month rent last month's rent in this commercial real estate it can be pretty pricey then you got to turn on the lights and when it's commercial real commercial real estate it's pretty pricey and you'll normally have to pay a large deposit on commercial real estate sometimes it can be thousands of dollars just to you know get the lights turned on that's before you even pay any bills same thing with the water bill you sometimes might have to pay a large deposit and then you have insurance you got to have insurance some kind of liability insurance and um, then there's other stuff also but that's some of your basic stuff that you're probably gonna have to pay you might have to have fire stuff checked out you know have you know have the sprinkler system checked have the uh, fire extinguishers checked sometimes the landlords might do that sometimes you might do that it depends on your lease so a lot of times starting out like i said find a booth to rent somewhere go to the flea market and sell just sell online or if you if you've kind of started selling online and you're kind of looking to move you know you need some more space kind of looking to move just out of your garage look to rent just a small warehouse space that's what we did we rented a 2,000 square foot spot and then we took over the two spots beside it and went to 4,000 square foot and then we went to 6,000 square foot so we had a 6,000 square foot warehouse in a business park it worked out really good for us we did sales on Friday and Saturday we advertised it as the ultimate garage sale and had people come on those days and they came we had stuff cheap so they were lining up on Friday morning it worked out really good we sold a lot of stuff online at the times at that time we were selling a lot of stuff on craigslist craigslist um it's kind of hard to sell on nowadays it's more facebook marketplace and things like that and actually facebook marketplace is not what it used to be it was really crazy for a while you could sell so easy you can still sell on there but it's not like it used to be there's you know there's just a lot of competition on there so you can use it but there's there's a lot of different ways you can sell now um best bet is to try to kind of start developing your own systems to sell stuff your own website and that sounds daunting and impossible but you can do it um so start off with a warehouse with low overhead um and you know you can find warehouse space cheap some places you can find it cheaper than others and it doesn't have to be anything pretty at all it can literally be the ugliest warehouse you've ever seen and the ugliest landscaping you've ever seen and it doesn't really matter if you know you're not a store store if you're selling most of the stuff online having weekend sales or something along that along those lines or having people meet you for larger items it doesn't really matter i mean you don't want to look in too scary for people if you're going to sell a lot of furniture i mean in that case you just got to make sure you're you know anyways you want to meet them in the day anyways but anyways so start off that route and you know work your way up to seeing if you want to move to a thrift store and all of that responsibility because you're going to have higher rent Okay, when we moved here to this building here, now we're kind of halfway between retail space and warehouse space. What I mean is, okay, if you look down this way, the main road, see the main road down there? You can see car pulling out right there. That's where the main road is. So we have weird easement. You have to pull into 
let me walk this way there's a chevron gas station there in a little strip you pull in there and then you pull back here and we're up on the hill behind it so when people are driving by out there you see the cars are driving by they can't necessarily get a really good view at us if you look here obviously you can see but it's not easy to see the first time you drive by um so our rent is not as high as, as a lot of strip malls and stuff like that like there's an ingles over there which is a big grocery store and there's some stuff it would be way more expensive being over there um but we are higher than warehouse space because it is retail this was built as a fred's which fred's doesn't exist anymore and if anybody you know kind of around the south in georgia alabama i'm not sure where else it was basically like a miniature walmart kind of had just you know a general kind of halfway between a walmart and a dollar general is what it was so this is we rent this building now to run our store and, and our auction in and the thing is if you're going to rely just on people literally just driving up you know and and finding you just walking off the street it's going to be very difficult the biggest thing that keeps us running is that right there our website for our online auction because that keeps the people coming in because they're coming in to preview our items they're coming in to pay for and pick up their auction items so they're coming in the store it creates a lot of traffic besides just the regular people that just you know happen to drive up and walk in also we do a lot of advertising on you know the social media platforms use them they're free you know facebook instagram you can use them all you can use twitter you can use other ones too and um, obviously for the auction, you know, we created our own website to, to um, do the bidding on that. Um, business hours, when it comes to a thrift store, you gotta be open. That's one thing I've seen with a lot of people, they're not consistent in their hours. Um, you don't have to be open like till late at night or anything. And actually that would be a waste of time most of the time. People just are gonna stop coming after a certain point. But here's our hours, nine to six, Monday through Friday, eight to three on Saturday. We could be open a little bit later on Saturday, probably four or five and get some sales, but it actually kind of starts dying off on Saturday. But we get her early for auction pickup and at the end of the week, we're ready to go. We're closed on Sunday because, you know, because we're Christians and, you know, Sunday's supposed to be a day of rest. And even for anybody that works here, if they're not going to church, that's fine. It gives them a day off on the weekend where everyone knows that you always have at least one day on the weekend off. So we're never, we never open up here at all. Every now and then if we, I've got something, you know, I'm kind of overwhelmed with something, you know, I have come in and done a few extra things. Like if we have a truck that like a U-Haul that just needs to be turned back in and we just run out of time, then I have come up here and done some stuff, but most, but we're not open on Sunday and we do just fine. So you don't have to be open on Sunday, but you really need to be open most, most days. Um, some people, they do like every day, but Monday and they close on, you know, close on Monday to have that one day where they're off. Or if you've got help, if you're doing it by yourself, it's hard to do seven days a week, but if you got help, reliable help, you know, then you could be open seven days a week. That's up to you. Um, we do rent U-Hauls. You can see the U-Hauls, a couple of U-Haul trucks that are out there now, U-Haul trailers. If you have the space, if you're gonna do a store and you have plenty of outside space, like as you can see, we got lots of space. We got space around the side, space around the back. If you have the space, U-Haul can be good. Now it does take your time. You gotta have somebody up front all the time because people will come in and rent the U-Haul and then people are wanting to buy stuff at the same time. But it's, you know, there's no upfront cost to you, no cost really at all. And it's, you know, a little bit extra money. It's not full-time money, at least here, because we have a lot of competition, but it does help. We average about an extra $1,000 a month in commission from U-Haul. So that's a pretty big deal. Pretty big deal, definitely. Your location, you might do less, you're, you might do more, you could do way more. If you can do budget trucks at your location, I have a friend, he has a store, about 30 minutes here they do budget trucks but budget trucks only want a location in certain areas versus u-haul they'll open them up everywhere so if you can get budget he makes a lot he makes more money running budget trucks than he does from his store so if you're in a location and you got plenty of space you might call budget up and say hey are y'all looking to open up a dealer in this area but if you do budget that's going to be full-time you know business but you're going to make full-time money most likely if you're doing budget but that's a whole nother story all right, so if you're gonna do the store, you've gotta have an online presence. Like I was saying, you've gotta be using your social media platforms. They're free, so use them. Um, okay, here's another thing. Your sign. 
Okay. Back up right here. See this? Uh, the name of our business is DLB Discount Resale. DLB is just the initials of me, my wife, and my son. That's the name of the business. Thrift Market is not the name of our business, but Thrift Market is on the sign to let everyone know what this is. It's a thrift store, it's a thrift market, whatever. So that lets them know what the business is. I see a lot of businesses, they will have the name of their business, which could be something really strange sounding, and it's up on the thing, up on there, and what they actually are is nowhere there. And if you're not well known, if you're not McDonald's, if you're not Walmart, People don't know what you are, so they don't know what your business is. So make sure you have thrift store, resale, used furniture, consignment, whatever the case, whatever you're doing, make sure you have that up there on the sign or paint it on your windows. Or if you have your, your sign up there that has your business logo, get another banner that, banner that just says, you know, thrift store and like hanging you know, across another part of your building. Make sure people know what you are. Because I see a lot of people, they get these really nice logos designed and everything, but when you, because they know what it is, but when you step back as a regular customer, you're like, what is that? What are they doing in there? There's several businesses I see, and I'm always like, I'm like, what are they? And you have to sit there and stare and look in the windows and try to figure it out. And a lot of times that's too late, you know, especially if it's somewhere people are driving by, you know, you can't do that. So make sure you have a good sign. Same thing if you're doing yard sales. If you're having yard sales, just put yard sale or garage sale really big, put an arrow. You don't need to list all the stuff you're selling and everything. You might put the time underneath there, but the biggest thing is yard sale, whatever, and an arrow. Because all that little stuff, most people can't, re can't read it when they're driving. They just want to see which direction to go. So come inside here. All right, this, I was talking about renting booths. Okay, this area right here, this stuff right here we set up front and we're open but all of this area from where i'm standing here all the way back do you see where that white little wicker sofa is all the way there and from this wall and to here is a space that a vendor is renting so they're renting this space so two things if you're just starting out you may want to rent a space like this to start out so then you don't have you're not having to worry about the power bill you're not doing all the overhead you're not having to worry about hiring a cashier, um, running that, doing taxes, all that stuff. All you're doing is you're going out and you're getting inventory, you're tagging it and you're keeping it stocked. And then you're gonna learn a lot about what people are buying, you know, customer flow, um, just different buying habits, you know, how to, how to display your items and all that kind of thing. You're gonna learn a lot doing something like this. So this might be a good idea starting out and just kind of getting your feet wet and seeing if you want to move up and have a store of your own because like I said it's not it's not it's not always very easy it can be very difficult at first and it may not end up being what you want to do at all you might want you may be interested in resale but you don't want to you don't want to run a store so you know unless you just you've been in resale for a while you've tried all this and I would say try this try flea market try yard sales try a warehouse whatever the case is before you jump into a store now if you start if you get a store going you go and you find space and especially say you find a space and you get a good deal it's a lot of space for you know a lot of bang for the buck but you feel like you're gonna have a hard time yourself keeping all of that space stocked then renting booths is a good idea when you have a store too because you can rent this space and then they help you keep stuff in the store. They pay rent on this space, plus you get um, a commission. We, like I said, we get 10% of sales. So they can help you keep that space filled and then help you, you know, put money toward paying the rent. And then you get a little bit, you know, commission, especially if you get good vendors in here and they're selling a lot of stuff, then you can, you know, you can make a lot of money. It's, you kind of form a partnership with them and, it, and they're happy if they're selling and you're happy. Thing is you got to hold up your end of the deal you got to do some marketing you got to get customers in here you've got to get traffic in here you got to make sure you're open during you know you know during your business hour because i've seen some places it's like they constantly as a small business i don't feel good we're gonna not be open today oh we got family in town we're not open today you can't do that if you're gonna have vendors then you got to be open really if you're yourself if you have a store and you're paying rent you've got to be open you've got to be consistent so um that's the biggest biggest thing is consistency i've seen so many people 
start stores or other business, but a lot of people with thrift stores and they're just not consistent, but that's with anything in life to be successful. But you just gotta, you've gotta be open. You can't say you're, have it on your door that you're open and then you're not, cause people will come, so you're not open and you know, they might not come back again. They're like, is this place closed, whatever, or you know, I'm not gonna drive over there and then they're not even open. So you gotta be consistent. So vendors can help you get started. Ven you know, being a vendor can help you get started. Having vendors can help you um, when you start a thrift store. Okay, another thing, like I said, you've gotta have some way to really drive the traffic in there. So you gotta be get creative. Like us, we do our auction. See, so okay, everything, this is all the store area. As you can see, okay, this is um, 18,000 square feet. So it's three times as big as our warehouse used to be. As you can see, that goes way over there. It's pretty big. We've got a lot of vendors. I think we've got like, I'd have to count them up. I'm thinking about 40 different vendors. And a few of them, that's everything from someone renting one shelf to like renting like a whole 20 by 50 area. So it's kind of all over the place, like vendor over here. Like if we come over here and look, like this vendor, they are renting this spot here. This block of space, they've got this case right here. They get a lot of inventory. If, if you get cases, you can actually rent display cases too and make money. And they'll put, you know, they can pack a lot of inventory into a display case. Right up here, let me show you. Also, sell snacks, sell drinks, because people will come in here and they will stay a long, long time, but they'll get hungry. They'll get thirsty. And that's all they can think about is they need something. So they will leave. You just gotta have have some snacks. You'll make a little bit of money off of it, but it'll keep people here, keep people shopping. As you see, we got the fridge right here with some drinks in it. But like this case right here, we rent this display case, just this case right here to someone. So every little nook and cranny, if you're gonna if you're gonna rent space, you can find a lot of little nook and crannies to put stuff to rent. Um, if you're gonna obviously. It's 2023. If you're not taking credit cards and you're going to have a hard time, but it's so easy now. Square is what we use. We started using Square when all they were was the little reader that you plugged into your phone, but now they're big time and you get this whole setup. They do payroll. They do loans. You can do checking accounts on them. You can do everything through them. You can do a, a million things through them that we use a few things like we do payroll and stuff, but there's a lot of different stuff that just doesn't apply to our business, like inventory stuff, because we get 50 million different items, buying stuff from storage units and vendors bringing stuff. We're not really most of the time ordering the same item over and over again. But if we walk back here, okay, these shelves right here, these all go outside. That's another thing. If you have some outside space, like if you look out here, we've already been out here, but see, we have this awning. So we use this space during the day. I bought a bunch of these big racks that roll and we roll stuff out there to give us more space, to give us more, you know, selling space and we roll them in here at night so they don't get stolen so they're kind of lined up down the aisle but back here in the back that's where our auction area is see the sign right there ology bid with an arrow that way so everyone that's bidding in the auction when they come in preview they walk through the store when they come get their items they walk through the store sometimes they're not going to buy anything from the store sometimes they they're, they go shopping and i see them get a whole buggy full of stuff and even if they don't buy anything for all at least they know they're like hey like a week or two later, hey, I saw a set of bar stools up there when I was getting my auction stuff. So they come back up here to check it out. And then vice versa, the people that just come in here off the streets to shop have no idea about our auction. They see the auction sign and they see the stuff out there and they're like, hey, what's this auction all about? We tell them and then they become a bidder. So they both work together and feed off of each other. So find something like that that you know some way to get people in the store besides just waiting on people to walk in off the street because it's going to be very tough you got to have some online presence if you got to create a website and po put your items on there and let people buy stuff off of that website like have some of your bigger ticket items or i mean really you could put anything on there but create a website if you're not going to do an auction like we do that's a whole nother deal you got to get licensed and everything create a website sell stuff off there or use your Facebook business page, sell stuff off there, um, Shopify. There's a lot of different ways you can do it, but you gotta be online. I mean, that's just the way it is. That's the way people are shopping now. You can still sell a lot of stuff in person. You don't have to like completely cancel, ignore that, but you gotta have some online presence. 
and there's just a million different ways to do it and so many different tools some so many of them are completely free a lot of them are cheap you know have small you know subscription fees or whatever but you got to use something else besides I'm gonna keep saying this because I see people do this something besides just waiting on people to walk in off the street you got to keep pumping out look everybody knows who McDonald's is everybody in the world has heard of McDonald's even places you know out in the middle of actual absolute nowhere villages and place have heard of McDonald's everybody knows they're on every corner but McDonald's they still have commercials they still run promos they still bring in special items you know the McRib is back um, they change out their happy meal um, the toys and their happy meals they're always doing something different why that's to keep it, keep it fresh in your mind that they're still there McDonald's is still here it's just to keep putting you in their mind over and over even though everybody already knows but they don't want you to slowly start forgetting and then they slowly start sliding down a little bit and other places you know kind of jump into the forefront so they're always advertising coke is always advertising there's a you know millions of coke commercials there's coke signs and everything and everywhere you go in gas stations or wherever there's coke signs and cutouts and displays all over the place so as a small business as a thrift store to think that you're not going to advertise that's crazy you got to advertise as much as you can but like i said it can be free facebook twitter tiktok instagram all those it's free to go on there and advertise you can yeah you can upgrade your run promotions on there and pay a little bit and sometimes that's a good idea to run that too but there's so much that you can do for free so use the internet even though thrift store a lot of people doing a thrift store think it's kind of like a basic business and you know kind of old school but you gotta use the internet you know there's just no way around it and you really need some kind of creative idea something different to get customers in here like i said we have the auction but there's other stuff that you can do Another thing, let me show you one more thing I'm going to talk about that we do that may help you out. If you're buying storage units, this is um, a big thing that you can do. There's a lot of people that are doing pallets that are doing whole stores like this. Okay, we've got these two aisles right here. See this aisle right here? It's jam full of stuff. This buggy here still has to be put out. But this aisle is jam full of stuff. This aisle is mostly empty. We've started putting a few things on it. What we do is we have the DLB Daily Dill Dig. All right, tomorrow is Wednesday. So this side right here will open up. Everything on this aisle is $2 each. On Thursday, everything left is a dollar. On Friday, everything's 50 cent and so on until Monday, it's free. By Monday, it's just the junk left and we're, it's free, so we're moving all of that junk. This is all the stuff that comes out of storage units that we don't want to put in the auction. It's not worth, you know, putting out there and putting 10, 20, 30 dollars on. It's all like dollar stuff, two, three, four, five dollar items, or even some stuff might only be worth a quarter, but then we sell it for a quarter or we give it away free. So this is, you can make a lot of money off of this stuff, selling it in a lot of volume. And, um, and it keeps all this junk moving. So create something like this in your store or whatever, you know, some kind of almost like a flea market type deal. Um, a lot of people are calling it treasure hunt. Um, they're opening up what they're calling bin stores where they build the bins and they're buying pallets and throwing it all in there and starting it at $10, whatever the case is. So something like that, you, you know, get creative. There's a lot of ways you can do it. Something like that to get people excited and keep them coming in because we have a lot of people come in here on wednesday morning they want to try to get first dibs of here and then a lot of those same exact people come on thursday and some of those same exact people come on other days some people come in here on monday for free but that helps us out because they take away the junk you know they're happy because they might find them a book here that they're interested in nobody else was you know just happened to be in you get so many books it's not a big deal they get something for free they're happy but they're taking away the the slow moving little stuff because this stuff will build up on you so that's just a little tip but basically here in 2023 get creative um use the internet people there's you know inflation is out of control so people are really tight on money so on big items you might have to you know you're gonna have to run some sales you're gonna have to get creative you're gonna um you're gonna have to watch you know watch your prices when you're buying because if you buy it, if you buy high, then you got to sell high or you're going to lose money. So you got to try to buy low. 
So you can buy low. If you buy low and you sell high, you're doing great. But with the economy and with inflation, you might have to be buy low and sell just a little bit higher. <laughs> you're not selling it here. You're buying, hopefully buying down here, and you can sell it right in here. That might be what you have to do. You might not be able to sell stuff way up here. Like, you know, last few years, there's been a few times a couple of years ago um, when everybody's getting their stimulus money, people were buying like crazy. You know, they were just rolling out buggies here and every piece of furniture we put out. But right now, you know, it's kind of it's kind of been a little bit slower to start this year. And looks like you're going to have to, you know, try to buy that stuff low so you can price it low if you're going to move some of those bigger items and keep them rolling. So just you got to that's another key is you got to have some um, sources for inventory and some sources for some good deals. So before you start a store, make sure you have the sources for inventory. That's another very important thing we didn't talk about at the beginning. Make sure you have several places you can get inventory, not just one place because they could close. They could change their pricing because over the years I've went all over the place getting different, you know, inventory. Storage auctions is always somewhere where, you know, you can get, you know, a lot of bang for the buck. Sometimes it can get kind of tough even, you know, with the storage units and you got to look for some other stuff, pallet places, all that kind of thing. So make sure you have several sources of inventory, you know, so you can, you're not just on one. And if, if something changes with them, then you're not, you know, up the creek without a paddle. But that's some of the tips for 2023, opening up a thrift store or not opening up a thrift store if you need to wait and kind of test the waters. But that's it for this video. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're always doing storage auction videos and other stuff related to the resale business, including videos like this, you know, with tips on the resale business. Y'all have a good one.